would you believe me if I told you this game is really, really good? Omori, aka Sunny, aka Ayo Yo Boy Got Drip, is a depressed, lonely, and all around horny f lord who likes to wear pants on his head. And I am not joking you right now. This was at one point canon. Except in the final game, they just they, they, they just remove all references to him being kinky, and now he's just <laughs> and now he's just exclusively sad and lonely. Ooh wee. You 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 can tell too. You you can tell they were trying to cover up something too. Because uh, if you look at the tissue box, it's it, it's kind of funny how they specifically establish that it's for wiping away your sorrows instead of just a generic description like most RPGs would use. Like, it's just a standard looking tissue box or it's just a regular tissue box. Kind of sucks. And it's not like Omori can actually cry or anything. In his most miserable state, stage 3, this little punk th th doesn't even shed a single tear. Like, look at this. I suppose his friends like Hero, Kel, Aubrey, whose tears are already visible at stage 2, with Aubrey being especially vulnerable, already shedding tears at stage 1. Needless to say, that, 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 that tissue box has a more sinister purpose than the game would like you to believe. <laughs> okay, this is getting kinda weird. Let's start from the top. Faraway Town is home to a creepy motherf- named Sonny, who spends most of his days visiting not safe for work sites, fantasizing about his delinquent childhood GF, or going on gay adventures with his gay boyfriend, Basil, who may or may not actually be gay. Under the alias of Amori, Sonny and Co go on fun, self-contained adventures, while his unconscious mind and the various black space creatures scattered around the world try to establish canonical backstories with them. Which they don't do a very good job of, honestly. Like, what the f does this deer represent? What's the point of this dog? What's that weird eyeball thingy stalking you everywhere like it's flowery from Undertale? Why is everybody looking at me like that? Who the hell is standing right behind me? Where the hell am I? Why is Helmari so hot? Why is this tree flipped upside down? What the hell is wrong with this bitch? And why are these Steam reviews so funny? See, the game just fed you an infuriatingly small amount of information, and for every question you solve, another 10 rises to take its place. But you can't help but keep playing, every step brings you closer to the big question. What happened to Sunny in the past? Why does the dream world even exist? What role does Bayes have to play in all of this? It gives you all these alluring questions and dangles the answers right in front of your eyes, like you're some kind of pig from Minecraft. Just close enough so you keep going, but just far away enough so you don't get any actual answers until the very end. Every single piece of plot and point dialogue that you get from the game are encrypted under layers and layers of abstractions and generalizations, which the game made sure that without the right context, you will almost never figure out the true answer to. It's annoying, it's enraging, it's frustrating, it's infuriating, and I love it. Just when you think the game has hit its absolute peak and couldn't possibly get any better, it bitch slaps you in the face and say, y you, you, uh, you missed a spot there, uh, <laughs> you're welcome. Not many games could do that, not many games could you go back to again and again and still have it surprise you. Witcher 3, Shadow of War, Shadow of the Colossus, Elden Ring, Nier Automata. Sure, these games are fun examples of a well-crafted world with well-hidden secrets and thousands of hours of replay value. But you know what all of these games have in common? They are all made by big studios with big budgets and a team of hundreds if not thousands of people. Omori is an indie game, made with a limited budget and limited manpower. This is probably the first game I played ever since Undertale back in 2015 that can surprise me again and again, way after the fact. Really goes to show that you only need a AAA studio or a AAA team to build a compelling world or tell a compelling story. All you need is dedication, maybe a little bit of crowdfunding. And seven freaking years apparently. Well, I mean, I, I, I didn't have to wait for the game like the rest of you because, uh, it, because I only found out about it when it launched, so... <laughs> Look my a lot of the people I've spoken to spend hundreds of hours in this game just to look for the next big secret. It's not even limited to the base game itself. Oh no! Old blog posts, old comics, game demos, concept arts. For the most dedicated fans, the replay value extends far beyond the game itself. This whole community is dedicated to deciphering the themes and stories of this game, from creators like myself, to fan artists, animators, analysts, secret finders, and even the damn memers. There are Reddit posts with thousands of upvotes, and Discord servers blooming with activity. However, that's not to say there aren't any flaws with the game. Oh no, there are plenty. 
The combat system, while fun, gets stale really, really quickly. Some enemies are too easy, some enemies are too difficult. There are way too many healing items in the wild, and I don't use them nearly enough. There's an entire section of the game you could miss if you weren't paying attention, which houses some of the best items and secrets in the game. The dream world sections, which makes up like 60% of the game, are entirely self-contained and mostly irrelevant to the overarching plot. And don't get me wrong, I enjoy the f out of those dream world sections. But looking at the dream world plot with a critical eye, the events really did not have much of an impact on the story at all. And the story has some really big plot holes right at the end, which I could not help but notice. How the hell does a 12 year old kid find the strength to pull up a grown adult's body up on a tree? Did Basil work out or something? Am I to believe that the police are so incompetent that they wouldn't notice the fingerprints and the obvious bruise marks on the body? Why does Sonny have memories from Basil's perspective? A lot of people pointed out like you know there were some uh, plot holes in the story like you know if they found out who like well because like you know with Sunny and, and Basil kind of committing that act it's like you would think people would call the police um and you know like a full criminal investigation would happen maybe who knows uh, or maybe they, they would have just counted it as like like an actual suicide and maybe they wouldn't have known but then like you see um uh, omori during the time go through his memories and eventually you see you know his uh, sonny's father like cutting down that tree and then saying like oh like you're not my son anymore or something or something along those lines like you see he knows that that sonny or basil had something to do with it and then you see his mother as well who is like in a in like in an emotional state breaking down on the couch like saying like oh like now you're the only son it's like we can't have anything happening to you it's like you know you you know for a fact if like if you saw those those scenes in the game they knew something was up but it's like they never called the police or anything but which which can be which people can say like maybe they wanted to hide it so that way you know Sunny and Basil wouldn't have to go through like you know any crimes or anything or like that early in their life. People can say that but you know at the end of the day it's like normally people would call the police or you know something you know but I, I guess that's just how it is you know that not every story is, is completely perfect. There's always going to be some sort of flaws you know but um yeah that, that, that was just one thing that I, I definitely saw in the game. It's like, it's, it's plot hole, sad, but it is what it is, you know? These are questions that keep me up at night. If it had been some other shitty game, I probably wouldn't even have cared. But this is not just any other game, it's Amori, it's emotional, it's heart-wrenching, and once you let it tug at your heartstrings, it never lets go. It's exactly because I love this game so much that I can't help but feel unfortunate that there were so many fatal flaws with the game's design which ruins user experience. Sure, you could explain away the plot inconsistencies or patch away the game so the difficulty is more balanced, so future players might get a better, more complete experience. But what about me? What about the thousands of other players who bought the game at launch? Everyone only has one chance of experiencing something for the first time. The games get half of their potential audience within the first few months of launch, and the other half within the next few years. That's half of us, maybe even more, who's got to make do with a worse experience and live with it forever. Wait for the game to get better? People have been waiting for this game for 7 years at this point. Could I seriously find the heart to ask them to wait even longer for the game to get better? F*** no. If you take even 5 minutes to google this up, these problems I listed are just barely scratching the surface. Many fans love this game just as much as I do but couldn't help but point out everything they see as wrong with the game. Not to say it they're right, all I'm saying is that some of the points they made were valid criticism. Well... There's a lot of factors that definitely would tell me to choose the rating that I choose. Like story-wise, like I said, there's a, some plot holes that a lot of people will point out. Um, Gameplay-wise, it's a little bit lacking if you're going through the true end. If you're going through Hikikomori, you will encounter some battles where like it makes you kind of think about what to do. But other than that, gameplay is a little bit lacking. Story-wise, uh, you know, obviously plot holes. Um, but like the experience overall, it definitely makes you go through th some things with yourself. Um, Thought-provoking. Um, yeah, sure, you might, you might, you know, be like a little depressed for a couple days, maybe weeks. But I would definitely say it's a worthwhile purchase. Um, and with that, I would definitely say that it's a hard four. Um, if I if I talk about story and gameplay wise too much, I would definitely give it somewhere around a three point nine, maybe. 
but yeah, may, 3.9 or 4. Uh, that's that's how I would rate it. Is Amori Med? Hell no. Is Amori a masterpiece? Still no. But is Amori an absolute once in a lifetime experience that you should definitely play before you die? To that I say... No. Nah, I'm just playing. It's yes, okay? It's yes. Jesus Christ, you people can't even take a joke. Oof. <laughs>